Yo, what's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, it's Jay Briggs here on Saturday, April 13th, man. Money making Saturday. We have a full schedule of Major League Baseball, a full schedule of hockey in the National Hockey League. No NBA. You know, that makes me feel kind of weird. Um, <laughs> but still finna cook up this MLB and NHL action. Got a whole crew of guys here with me to help us make some money today. Mitch, let me have it, man. Give, give it to me. <laughs> oh, I think I, I don't think there's really much I could say, except maybe we could just uh, read it for what it was. Um, <laughs> you know, read that stat line of uh, read it to me. What, 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 your boy, as you called him, Kevin Gausman. Um, it was uh, 3.2 innings pitched, 10 hits, six runs, all earned, four strikeouts. Yeah. No walks. No walks, man. Clean. <laughs> no free passes. Shout out Kevin Gals, man. man. <laughs> minus 240. Not, not a minus 245 pitcher against anybody. Sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. You you hit the nail right on the head. Hats off to you. Now I owe you two hats. God damn it. I, I love, I love the uh Mission got me on Joe Boyle and Faulkner. Like, god damn. <laughs> well, the, the best teams in baseball win about a hundred times a year. Um, most of them even less than that. And the worst teams in baseball win about 60 something games a year. So um you gotta just Find where the value is. You know, that's what it's always about. It's like, yeah, you might be wrong on, you know, you take the Rockies 100 times a year, you might be wrong on 40, you know, you might be wrong on 60 of them. But if you find the right 40, I mean, we're, you're still ahead. And that's the whole idea of baseball is just finding the value. And that's why laying runs and odds is the stupidest thing you could possibly freaking do. If you would have laid minus two and a half instead of minus one and a half, then that makes even more sense, you know, than laying one and a half and laying odds on top of it. The idea is to maximize your win, not to mitigate losses. Fair enough. And I'll continue to say it, and Ruflo can sit there and say, no, it's not, but, you know, I say, where's your ass on the leaderboard, big guy? Behind me, you. looking up. Mm -hmm. Looking up. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I'm going to guess everybody on top of you has never put runs and odds. Money making Saturday. We'll, we'll live to fight another day, man. It's a long season. It's a long season, man. And then we got those dog days of summer. Yeah. <laughs> those are going to be fun. Oh, for sure. For sure. For we'll sure. be throwing in some UEFA Champions League with uh, – I think that's Euro this year, right, Chris? Euro. Yeah, no, I think I'm a yeah. – Tony yeah. T been kind of pulling my coattails the last couple of years. I might might do a little WNBA. <laughs> we could do WNBA. We got room. We got all kinds of stuff we could cover. We got boxing coming up. Is Wayne here? Nah. Talk to him tomorrow. He'll be here. Talk to him about the fight. Yes, sir. Roof alone. What's up, brother? Yeah, not much. Yeah, one on one in the uh, MLB yesterday. NBA kind of kicked my butt, but uh, it's finally bounced back today. Uh, NHL card, MLB. Yeah, uh, we were talking about it before the show. It's a little weird to have no NBA today, but that's fine. Playoffs are just around the corner. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Javon, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? You know. Had a three and three um day yesterday, three and two in the NBA. Should have actually been better, but um, you know, when uh the Knicks want to collapse <laughs> in the fourth quarter, it is what it is. But um, and I let um, I got I got basically not priced out, but um, the number got too big for me in the um OKC game. Oh, it actually wasn't too big. They, <laughs> you Running know, <laughs> beat the brakes off of <laughs> off of um the Bucks, you know, so. You know, I didn't pull the trigger on that, but yeah, you know, my only on um, baseball play uh, lost. So, you know, I had an even basically an even day um, yesterday, but been rolling. You know, um, previous 
uh, 14 days, 11 of those been winning days. So, you know, just trying to um, keep it going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's no NBA today, but man, the way tomorrow sets up, there's plenty to talk about. <laughs> I've never seen the NBA season come down to how tomorrow comes down. I think right now there's only one playoff series set in stone still. <laughs> Heading into tomorrow, that's crazy. There's so many seating things going on tomorrow. A lot to look at. The wacky, what's happening, Brody? Oh, not too much. You were winning and going right along, and then you hit one of those bumps in the road. You have those days, right? So uh, Friday was a bump in the road day for me. I had uh, Arizona was uh, my big play, and uh, they go down uh, early six nothing, and then they come roaring back and tie it up at six and lose anyways nine six. Why do they give you that hope? <laughs> I would have rather just been down six oh. nothing. I give you the hope to come back and you tied it up and like we got a chance. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> so anyways, so those days happen. So big bounce back day for uh, me here today. Oh, yes, sir. Sean Murphy, how you doing today, Brody? Good, good. Yeah, hit the two big plays last night at the over in the Rangers uh, Astros game. That was. That was great. Turned away for about five minutes and went back, and it was seven one. So that was that worked out well with that over. Uh, had the Predators on the puck line in the I NHL for a plus I plus money you. return there. But uh, I was on the D backs too last night. That was, I mean, that pitching staff is is rough. Like it's, I thought they might get more out of uh, more out of the starter last night. Just didn't didn't work out. Down, you know, right off the bat for nothing, and then just you get that false comeback where it just frustrates you. And, Anyway, two and three night overall last night. So, yeah, bit of a broken record here on Saturdays. It seems like Friday is not my night, but uh, we'll look to get get back on track as usual here on Saturday. Let's do it. Let's do it. David. Your team ran into the hottest team in the NBA yesterday, Jay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, y'all did get us yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were rolling out the C team, but, hey, we, we got you. Yeah, you did. Y'all did. Shout out to Pistons. <laughs> No 50 point game out of our boy Flynn, though. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of sad. <laughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. Things looking up and up in Detroit, man. Them, uh, them Lions had a solid season. You know, I'm on that Tigers bandwagon. You are. Mitch won't let that bandwagon get going, but we won't, but we're, we're on it. We're still going to start it. Man. We're still going to try to get it going. Tight. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, what's going on, my man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. In case anyone's wondering, 133 days until college football. So we're getting there, creeping slowly. 133 days till college football. I'm ready. I'm with you though. I think I think I gotta get in the WNBA this year. I haven't really yeah. I've paid I've paid a little bit of attention last year, but I didn't uh, didn't do much with it. But I think this year I have to because the summer just gets so boring. Yep. I'm going to look at it a little bit. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be my first year, so, you know, it's kind of bumpy to start, but maybe not. We'll see. Maybe maybe that might be your might be your gift. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Me, fellas, yesterday was okay for me. I was 4-2 and two overall. Um, NBA, I was 1-2. I had, I had the magic. They were in it. They were in it into the last minute, and then they just wasn't. Um, in Major League Baseball, I was 3-0, though, so that was a good day for me. I did not have the Blue Jays as a premium, uh, but <laughs> I still own now, and I still wear it. Mitch got me on my hat. His boy back on the mound today. We'll talk about him, Joe Boyle. Let's see if he back in Joe Boyle today. <laughs> but let's talk some Major League Baseball. Let's go ahead and dive right in, fellas. We got some early games. We got some teams playing double headers. First game up is a double header. Got the Yankees and the Guardians. And we got the Tigers and the Twins. We're both of the double headers to start the day. And we'll do Royals Mets with a three. So Yankees, Guardians, Twins, Tigers, Royals, Mets. Mitch, you've been hot. Lead us off. Yeah, I got to go with the Guardians here against the Yankees. Same thing that we talked about yesterday when we covered this game. Aaron Judge 0 for 8 with 8 strikeouts versus Carlos Carrasco in his career. So that is uninspiring to his entire team. It should suck the life out of this Yankees lineup. Um, Clark Schmidt does eat shit. I know it for a fact, and I expect to see him eat plenty of it in this one. I'm going to go with the Guardians in that one. I love Fade and Joe Ryan. He's one of the more overrated pitchers out there. Kenta Maeda, you know, this is a guy that, 
he's a precision pitcher. So, you know, you could see in the early going, he might have problems here and there. I mean, these are the guys that throw 90 miles an hour, right? He's not one of those guys that has that hundred mile an hour out split fingered, you know, slider or something, you know, this guy is just going to paint the corners and, you know, do what he does. And I think he's going to frustrate that twins lined up here. The Tigers are pretty hot right now. Um, I'm going to take them to beat this Twins team, which I'm looking for to, for straight regression. <coughs> and, you know, I think this Mets-Royals game has the possibility to run for hours on end. I think this one's an over. Sean Manaya is a guy that finds a lot of the plate when he pitches, and it's just a matter of making guys hit or miss. But he doesn't throw a lot of balls. You know, it's mostly strikes for him. And then Alec, Ma Alec Marshall, man. <laughs> oh, boy. I haven't seen a pitcher like Alec Marsh since the last time Hunter Brown took the mound. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with the over in this one. Shouty. Ruffalo. Yeah, give me the Mets in that one. Um Alec Marsh is the weak link of that rotation. And I always back I, well, I was back in the world when they uh were up against uh right handed pitching that give up a lot of hard contact. They haven't fared as well against left handed pitching. Sean and I has pitched pretty well this season, had a great spring training, carried that into the regular season. And uh, I think it was 0.82 ERA so far. I know it's not sustainable for a full season, but it's pitching well right now. And uh, I think the Royals might have a bit of a hangover after having that losing, excuse me, the win streak snapped. So um, give me the uh, the Mets there. And I, I'm going to go with the uh, the Guardians in game one as well. Um, I just I think we're starting to see finally, you know, that now the line is starting to flip a little bit that, the Guardians are getting a little bit of respect for how well they've been playing. I mean, they've quietly gone, what, nine and three to start the year. Only one win behind the uh, the Yankees who are getting all the attention. So, yeah, I think uh, get a decent start out of Carrasco. He's only got to go about four or five innings. The 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 uh, the, uh, the Guardians are one of the best bullpens in baseball from an ERA perspective. So, give me the other uh, Guardians in game one. Cleveland Guardians. Javon, would you like me to first three, my man? Yeah, I'm on the Guardians as well. You know, Cleveland's hot. We all know it. Even with um, Carlos Carrasco on the mound, he's not gonna. He's he's gonna he's gonna have a short leash. So if he is in any sort of trouble, they're gonna pull him. But um, you know, their bullpen bullpen's one of the best in baseball right now. And like I said, there's six and one in their last seven. So you know, I can't look any other way. But the Guardians in that one. And I'm going to roll with the under in, in, in the game, too. Um, you know, Clark Schmidt, he hasn't... Schmidt. He, he's, you know, he's, he's pitched okay. You know, so I think, think um, eight and a half at this point is still good enough for it to stay under. I don't expect um, a lot of runs in this one. There you go. Hot rods wacky. Talk to me. Yeah, I agree with Joe on in the under uh, in the Yankees Cleveland game. You know, look, uh, both offenses definitely not ripping it up, and the Yankees hitting right handed pitching that 217. Um, Guardians uh, 241, so a little bit better. But uh, when in so both starting pitchers, I think go uh, five plus innings. Um, we got game <coughs> one, so I like the under first five as well. And then you look uh, when it comes to the bullpens, you got the uh, Yankees bullpen at a 2.4 ERA, and the Guardians at a one point. Four eight teams not hitting uh, much over two hundred uh, on either of these bullpens. So yeah, I like the under in that one, and then I like the uh, I, I like the Royals here. Uh, Sean Manaya, yeah, he's had a good start, and uh, but something seems uh, his strikeout total is only at five and a half. He's struck out six and eight, and, and something just uh, seems like he's going to get rocked today early in that one. So I kind of like the Royals uh, early first five. And as Mitch says, I think we see a whole lot of runs in that game. But I think the uh, Royals get the job done with that plus price. There you go. There you go. Sean Murphy. I ain't going to lie, Sean. Your name sounds like you're batting like fourth for like the Pirates. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> it's like my Twitter profile. I have to clarify. I get a lot of messages from people that think I'm Sean Murphy with the, uh, you know, formerly Oakland A's, yeah. Atlanta Braves. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, we're kind of all on the same page a little bit here today in these early games. I think uh, first game, I like that under in Cleveland. I just feel like the Yankees cooled off a little bit at the end of the, the series against Miami. Uh, then they end up getting that off day yesterday because of the rain out. So I think that total is a little high at eight and a half. I'll go under that total. Uh, I like the Tigers as well. Like Mitch said, Joe Ryan, just overrated starter. I think, uh, I think the long term, you're going to lose money 
laying uh, laying prices with him. Uh, just look at his first two starts this year. His last start, they were what minus one sixty five, minus one seventy. Uh, ended up losing that game, I believe. Um, I'll give a shot with the uh, with the Tigers there at a plus money return off the uh, off the blow win last night. And then the third game, uh, yeah, I'm looking to fade Sean Manaya here, but not with not with Alec Marsh going for the Royals. So I'm also on the over in that one. Uh, you know, Manaya wasn't wasn't good last year. Comes in here, he's he's hot out of the gate, but you got to look at these small sample sizes uh, at the start of the MLB season. It's just can't put too much stock in two starts. Um, I like that Royals offense. I do think they wake up. They were they were a no show last night, but that was a kind of a Kind of a tough spot, I guess, coming off that huge uh, sweep of the of the Astros. So I think they bounce back here today, but I think the Mets get to Mersh and the uh, and the Royals pen as well. So I'll go over in that game. There you go, David. Talk to yeah, I'm going to go against uh, my Tigers here in Game One of the doubleheader. Um, I agree, Joe Ryan's not great, but Kenta Maeda, you know, I, I I haven't liked him over the years, and you look at his first two starts this year. You know, he played a really bad Chicago team, allowed six earned runs, seven hits over three and a third inning. Uh, I know Oakland has played better than uh, I think most people thought, but did not look good in that game either. I just think it's a spot where uh, we have two bad offenses going against each other, and I think Kent's made is the weak link. So I'm going to go uh, with the Twins there. And then I uh, I agree with, I think uh, Chris said at the Royals, I think KC is in a good bounce back spot here. They – uh They've played well to start the season. I know they they lost by a good margin last night, but I like what I'm seeing from them. And uh, I think, you know, I don't love the starting pitching, but uh, I do like the offense. And I think KC at that price is a, is worth a look. Fusodi, I ain't gonna lie. I like the Guardians. I I like them later on today, but in that first game, I think I got to roll with Schmitty. I do. And if I were to play it, I'd probably go run line with the Yanks. Give me some plus money. Um, I think Carrasco could get his ass lit up and, and out of there early. And I know the bullpen has looked nice, but I wouldn't be surprised if this game jumped out Yankees early and the Guardians are all right, like, all right, we'll get them next game later on today. Like, kind of take that approach. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised. I kind of like the Yanks game. Well, I don't take the Yanks often, but. Schmitty on the mound is kind of when I look in her way, and they got my guy Stroman too. So, many Yanks game one, and uh, I, I am on the Tigers train. I love the Tigers, I don't really like them game one neither. I'm not taking the twins, I'm not taking the 50 50 twins, but I do lean in that direction. I can to my aid, it kind of makes me nervous too, David. Um, Joe Ryan, man, the the ace of this uh of this staff. <laughs> Forgot that bit from last year, but um, look, the Twins are not going to lose every game. They're the fifty fifty Twins, so you got to know the spot where they get dubs, um, and the spots where they fall flat. They're the Minnesota Timberwolves of Major League Baseball. It's funny how they're eerily similar. Style game they win and then they get blown out game two. We'll talk about it later, but I'm going to lean towards the Twins in that one. Let's go to the next three. We got the Reds and the White Sox back to the scene of the crime. (laughs) Where we got the Rockies (laughs) and the Blue Jays and we got the Brewers and the O's. I'll actually start back in. Um, David. What you liking to hear in these three? Yeah, I'm looking at the Cincinnati and uh, and Chicago White Sox game. You know, the White Sox really struggled, obviously, to start this season. Just two wins. Offensively, uh, they've been horrible. Um, but pitching for them today, I, Garrett Crochet, I want to say. Is that how you say it? I don't know if it's Crochet or Crochet. But he's been uh, very solid to his first couple of starts. I really like what I'm seeing from him. Lodolo's going for the Reds. I think we could see a lower scoring game here. I like the under... Uh, it's at seven and a half right now. I like the under there. And then uh, looking at Colorado and Toronto, you know, I almost, I, I do lean Colorado in this game, um, you know, coming off the, the win yesterday. I don't love the pitching matchup here for the Blue Jays. I know Dakota Hudson for the Rockies has had his issues over the years, but he's looked okay through two, through two outings. And I think uh, the Rockies at plus 160 is worth a look. There you go. There you go. There you go. 
Uh, Murphy, talk to me. Yeah, looking at that Brewers Orioles game, I like the Brewers last night. They ended up crushing the Orioles in that one. I think uh, they're almost worth they're almost worth it at this price again today with DL Hall going. Um, I think we talked with him a little bit last weekend. He's, you know, they like what they have in him. I think he's uh, he's the better starter in this in this matchup with Dean Kramer going for the O's, kind of a middle of the road uh, starter there for Baltimore. So I, I just think the price you almost have to consider the the Brewers in that one. Uh, I'm with David in the Cincinnati White Sox game, but I'd probably look at the under in the first five innings in that one, just because I don't like either bullpen all that much in that game. I think the two starters, uh, I think the two starters pitch well in that game. And what was the third game in that group? White Sox Reds. Uh, that was the one I just mentioned. Rockies yeah, Blue Jays. Rock, Blue Jays. Oh, sorry, Rock, Rockies Blue Jays. Yeah. So the Blue Jays here. I mean, big price for a guy coming up making his first uh, major league start. They 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 paid him a lot of money. This the Ariel Rodriguez. He's he's had some success, but uh, more as a reliever in Japan, uh, pitched in Cuba for a while. So. I don't know exactly what to expect uh, from him here. And the Rockies are one of these teams that you can't really, can't really trust to to break out like that every night, uh, especially on the road with that offense. But that'll be that'll be just a side. I'll be uh, I'll be staying away from that side in that game. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's a wacky. What you got here? For, for for me in these ones here, I, I like the White Sox uh, first five. Um, I don't trust the bullpen on the White Sox. And uh, Garrett Crochet has been – he had a good start. And Nick Lodolo making his first start of the season. Uh, we've seen what he did last year. He wasn't good in soft spots. He got ripped up. So, I, I think as uh, as David said, we got a lower one. But uh, I think the White, Co- White Sox can sneak out that first five win. So, I'm going to take the White Sox first five. And then I'm going to take the over in the uh, Rockies and Jays. As we've seen yesterday, we've seen a whole pile of runs. And the last four meetings head-to-head between these two teams – he got well into the double digits and runs, and I think that continues here in uh, Toronto. They re- revamped uh, the Rogers Center uh, just for this reason, for uh, more offense in Toronto, and that's what we get here today. Take me over, Colorado, Toronto. J-Man and Raul like Shaq and Kobe in the, in the chat. <laughs> Jovan. Yeah, I'm on, um, I'm on Milwaukee. You know, Milwaukee's just had the all of those number eight and two last ten, five and one last six. You know, I like fading Dom Dean Kramer. That's one of my guys I like to fade, you know, since he's been in the majors. And you know, DJ Hall can be had, but I don't know. I I watched him during the Boston series, and you know, the Orioles they had to come back um in a Late in the, you know, late in um, a couple of those games. So, you know, with that said, or at least one of those games. So, with that said, I, I, if they get to, if they get to Milwaukee, I think it's going to be in the later innings, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think um, Milwaukee's going to continue to, you know, to have their way against the Orioles. There you go. Hey, in this slot. I'm on the O's again today. I lost with them yesterday. I don't like them often, but I'm on them today. D.L. Hall finna get lit up. His old team finna light him his ass up. This is a Baltimore run line spot. Um, Brewers, they have been hot. Shout out to them. Them bats was going yesterday. I was I was kind of surprised. But I think this is a bounce back Baltimore O spot. I actually think they get their revenge in pretty dominant fashion. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind laying two and a half here. Um I think D.L. Hall is in for a long day back at home. Um, that's just how I see it. And then back to the scene of the crime. I don't really know what to expect from Yariel Rodriguez. Um, that's the problem here in this game. The thing is, we know the Rockies. They, they, they give you one and then they get aired out. So give me the Blue Jays at like two and a half. I'm going to kick the crap out of him. I'm going to bounce back. I like Vlad for a home run today. Um, Yeah, that's what I like in that one. Blue Jays bounce back at the crib today on a Saturday. And then I'm on the White Sox as well. Um, Gary Crochet been really good. Kind of surprisingly good. 21 Ks. That's nice. Um, 
Ladolo, we know, we know, we know what's up with Ladolo. We all know what's up with Ladolo. I like y'all know I like the Reds, but not today. I think this is uh I think the price kind of tells you, you know, what it is. Maybe, maybe Gary Crochet might start becoming a little overvalued, but until until then, we'll see. I- I'm on the White Sox now. Mitch. Yeah, I'm I'm going back to the well on the Rockies in this one against the Blue Jays. I think the Rockies are actually a streaky team, and I think they streak another one here over a Blue Jays team with Yariel Rodriguez, who makes his first major league start. We know we do know what to expect from Rodriguez, and it's not like we don't know what to expect. Like no one's ever seen him pitch before. He's good for about two to three innings, is what he basically is. He's a out of the bullpen guy. If they happen to chance it and let him go through the batting order for a second time, we're going to see 10 runs hit the board fast on this guy because he doesn't have top end speed that he can just, he doesn't have the out pitch, right? So he can strikes out a lot of batters because he can pick his spots. He can kind of go up, change up speeds, do all that kind of stuff. He has good stuff. I mean, he's Cuban born. He's not like a 19 year old kid out of high school. He's 27 years old. We know these guys freaking lie about their age. He's probably in his mid thirties, right? I mean, like, what, remember El Duque? I'm 26. It's like you're 50, man. It's like we all know it. Louis T on, you know, El Duque. I mean, these guys, the Cuban boxers, right? They just lie about their age, man, constantly. So I'm going to guess he goes to 27. I'm going to guess he's early 30s, um, you know, at, at, at youngest. But the thing is, is that, you know, we know he doesn't have top end stuff. And we know once again, just like yesterday, when Bailey Faulkner dazzled the Blue Jays lineup. These guys can't hit right handed pitching, man. And you cannot lay odds at all with a team that can't hit right handed pitching if they're facing a righty. I mean, it really is that simple. Um, I, I don't see it. It's not like the Jays are killing teams at home. It's not like they're, uh, you know, have this great overall record. They're, I mean, they're six and eight, man. It's like they're four games ahead of the White Sox. So you guys are bashing over here. It's like they're really they're four games. They're four wins better than the Marlins is all they are. They're four wins better than the Marlins. And yeah, that's what they are, man. You you are what you are, man. As as Charles Barkley says, your record is your record, man. And that is what they are. So you can't lay minus one eighty four with a first time starter who probably won't go three innings. You're, then you're into your bullpen, and we all know what that is, and that's straight ass. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take the Rockies there just on the pure value alone. I think the Brewers sweep this series against the Orioles, man. I said it yesterday. I'm gonna say it again. I would go the app opposite of what Jay said. I go. I'm not saying because Jay said it. I'm saying because this is what I would have played anyway. I go the minus two and a half with the Brewers. I think they. I think they fuck them up. Is what they do. I'm gonna. Dean Kramer sucks, man. And this Orioles bullpen. You know, they have inflated numbers like the Red Sox. And what we've seen from the Orioles is when they get home, they're certainly not, there's certainly no advantage. And one thing we know about the Brewers, same thing I said yesterday, these guys are the undisputed kings of interleague play, man. They are, they've lost three times in the last year in interleague play, man. I don't think Dean Kramer sets up to be one of those. So I'm going to take the Brewers, man. They they pasted them up yesterday. I don't think they I don't think they slowed down. The only reason why they didn't score more runs yesterday is because the game was over. I mean, that was really the only reason. They could have they if the game kept going, it'd be fifty. You know, um, the other one, the White Sox and the Reds. I don't know. Nick Lodolo has never been on my good list. I'll just homer pick it with the White Sox. I don't love it. I I like the White Sox if I was getting about plus one third. Is what I need. I need plus one thirty to get there. If you can't give me that, so you think I can't. Crochet's starting to become overvalued? No, I don't think Crochet's overvalued. I think I think you have a lineup that's not hitting the ball, that's hitting you know at about less than two hundred from both sides of the plate, and then you know it's like all those things. I mean, Nick Lodol is a joke, right? I mean, we know that, I and mean, we're not going to sit here and call him like you know like the second coming of you know Jacob Degrom like we did with Galsman yesterday. We're going to just call him what he is. And that is, you know, he's Nick Lodolo. But the White Sox aren't hitting anything, man. And it's like, I love my White Sox. Everybody knows that, you know. There's no, like, you know, if, ands, or buts. I am unwavering, you know, on the White Sox. But, I mean, it is what it is, man. You're batting 208 versus right-handed pitching. You're batting 190 against lefties. And you're 
bullpen's got a 4.55 ERA. It's a bad combination. It's a real bad combination. I'll lean to the White Sox, but I can't bet it at this price. I need, I need, we only got two wins. I need 130. I need it. Chris, you're going to give me 130 on this? On what? On the White Sox. Yeah, Should like these three roof. It's really like here's uh, first the uh, Blue Jays run line. Um, I like what I've seen from Yario Rodriguez. Dakota, the Rockies have given Dakota Hudson two runs of support in two starts this season. They have league worst. Uh, let's see here, what is it? Six point three six bullpen ERA. Uh, Rodriguez, you know. 94 to 97 mile an hour fastball looks really good in the world. No, he doesn't. Classic. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. His top end is 95. Top 97. End. No, 97. 95. Tryouts, you hit 96 on average. Tryouts, but in game, 95 in game, 94 is his to high ever. 94 to 97. 92 to 95. Okay. We're watching two different games then. But um, because I, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen 97 consistently. I have not seen 97 or consistently. Well, we're back, Roof. That's fine. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm playing with house money, man. That's the difference. It's <laughs> fine. We're back on the horse. Yeah, Let's go. It's fine. He can get bucked off again. Right off that horse. There he goes. Holy. <laughs> Yeah, Dakota, Dakota Hudson's only gotten two runs of support. They're the eleven and forty-four Dolphins. now, Chris, and their last fifty-five on the road. You understand that? Watch out, the Rockies like be I, coming. I understand. The, I understand coming. the mitig- I understand <laughs> the mitigated risk I have to calculate here. Believe me, I, I've, I've, it's, it's, it's baked. It's baked into my line for this. Game. One at one at one and nine in their in their last ten in Toronto after yesterday. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they, uh, yeah, they shot their load yesterday. I think they're. I think they're due to. To bounce back here, uh, to fall back. See, this is, a, but here's the, here's my, here's my point of contention here, right? Is, and it's the same point that I had yesterday and I've had, you know, we'll continue to have every baseball season with everybody. Just because one team struggles or has this thing or whatever, does it make the other team good? Or does it make no. them re, a, re, a legitimate minus 185 favorite? No, that's fair. I get it. There's, 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 there's certain stigmas that are back baked into, and certain narratives that are baked into certain lines. And I'm not, I'm not disputing that. And I'm guilty of, of, you know, backing into them myself. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that I'm not. I'm just saying it's, you know, still Dakota Hudson. He's looked good from an ERA perspective in his first couple of starts, but he has one of the two- better names in, in, in all of pitching. This is true. Hmm. Oh, who was? Oh, it's like who was the one? Who was the guy that, that was in the NBA to like oh five? Oh, Cherokee Parks. Yeah, yeah. There, there are certain there are certain legendary names, but ah, I, I just I I just think that the Blue Jays lineup, you know, yeah, they've had their ups and downs. They've been inconsistent, but I think this could be a good spot for them to bounce back here. I just I think a lack of offense is really going to hurt Dakota Hudson this season. He's, he's going to be one of the better starters that they have. But he's just not going to have a, a good record because he doesn't get the run support that he needs. But he's had three seasons with the ERA and the twos. No, yeah, that's fair. I, I, again, I'm not. I'm not saying he's a bad pitcher. You're saying he's a belly itcher? Is that what you're, <laughs> <laughs> is that where you're going with this? Yeah, sure. Well, that, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give up that one. But um, yeah. <laughs> I'm also going to go with the under in the first five between the Reds and the White Sox. I really like what I've seen from Garrett Crochet. Um, you know, high strikeout, you know, pitcher. And uh, the, the Reds have been known to strike out a ton against lefties this season. But the White Sox offense hasn't been very good for much of anything this season. Um, usually three runs or less in a full game. So the first five, I think Lodolo can have a nice debut here. And, uh, yeah, we got a low score in the first five. And, I'm not going near that that Orioles and Brewers game. I think I would lean towards the Orioles. Um, but like Mitch said, it's like it, the, the Brewers have been so good in interleague play. It's kind of like a cop between a rock and a hard place there. So I, I'm staying away from that one. We got the Pirates and the Phillies. We got the Rangers and the Astros. And we got the A's and the Nationals. Hey, man. Say, man. 
Ronel Blanco finna get his ass lit up. All right. This little stretch of him looking really good, that shit's over with. You know why? Because the Rangers own the Houston Astros in Houston. That's why. All right. It's just that short, that sweet, that simple. You're going to give me this much plus money with the better team who has dominated the Astros in Houston? What have we won down there? Like now, like six, six seven straight? Something crazy. Blanco has been nice. I, and I was there for that last game where he had a no-hitter going again. It did get broken up late. He did look good. But you're going to give me the better team at plus money, bro. I'm taking the Rangers every day of the week. Um, I lost a hat last time this guy was on the mound, Joe Boyle. He looked good. Mitch got me. Mackenzie Gore on the mound. I'm fading his ass. I'm on the A's again. They're going to give me plus money. Home dog with that. Joe Boyle. <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe. <laughs> on Joe Boyle and the A's in this one. Um, I had the A's yesterday as a premium. It was a sweat, but they got it done. Um, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back on the horse today and take them in that one. At Pirates Phillies, uh, nothing really for me there. Value play on the Pirates who've been playing the better baseball after plus money, but I wouldn't be too too surprised um, if the Phillies got that one. But I would take Pittsburgh there for the value. Mitch, I'm gonna have to go the other side on that one. I'm gonna go Pittsburgh. I think that um... I took Pittsburgh. All right, then I'm on, I'm I'm I'm, agree, I'm in agreement. I'll take <laughs> Pitt, I'll take Pittsburgh. I I just like I just like Faden Spencer Turnbull. I've I've you know I've I've done well with it. I and David Racy knows what I'm talking about. He's been there. You know it's it's there's no way this guy's gonna have a 0. 0.0 ERA for the season. It's gonna come swiftly. It's gonna come <laughs> like very fast. Kind of like how some of these other guys. Kind of like how you Darvish has happened. You know, where all of a sudden he's cruising around at a 0 0.0 ERA, and then it's, all of a sudden he's at 3.5. Yeah, that's how it's going to happen with Spencer Turnbull because it's going to be quick and decisive. I, I I like the Pirates in that one. I think with Spencer Turnbull, you're just sitting on a ticking time bomb um, with the Phillies, and they strike out too much. I like, of course, Joe Boyle. I like watching Mackenzie Gore, and I like going to games that Mackenzie Gore pitches because he gives up a lot of home runs. So he's a good guy to go see live. Um, if you got a chance to see Mackenzie Gore, of course, as we always say, bring a glove. He gave up 27 bombs last year um, in 27 games. So, you know, if you go see Mackenzie Gore pitch, chance you're going to see one leave the stadium. And, um, yeah, Ronel Blanco, we bashed him two starts ago. He threw a new hit, no hitter, and he looked really good the last time out too. But, like I've been saying every single time, every single day about the Astros, Verlander. Valdez, Iroquiti, Garcia. Who else am I missing, Chris? Well, Kendall Graveman. It goes on and on and on. It feels like there was someone else missing from there. You said the, only, the only starter that they have left from their rotation is Christian Javier. Is the only starter they have left. Everybody else is a triple-A pitcher in their organization. So I'll go with Jay with the Rangers against triple A pitcher here and um, a good triple A pitcher, but a triple A pitcher nonetheless. And uh, Andrew Heaney, you know, we can only he hope knows. that he left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's it's 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 uh, it's going to be a tight one. But my guess is they're studying that film on Rono Blanco like no one's business, man, after those last two starts. I trust Heaney today. Heaney got me today. I don't trust him at all. Well, I, trust I trust the Rangers him. bats. <laughs> <laughs> Heaney got me. Rufalo. <sighs> don't want to do it, but I'm doing it. I'm taking the Astros today. Uh, um, the only reason I'm saying that is because these I'll are these are two pitchers that were – Responsible for two of the that's fine. Put me in a box. I don't care. I'd rather be in the box and walk. Yeah, it's not a box, it's a square. Yeah, cause... I know, I know. But boxes are square, they're cubes, whatever. It's all right, man. Whatever. I'm What's okay your fit? What was your favorite part of the of the uh of the of rewatching? Did you rewatch the uh argument yesterday? The, the discussion yes, I did. Like Rocky's game. What was your favorite part of it? 
Koski Koski suggesting he'd run into traffic than bet on Kevin Gosman. My favorite part was Raul in the comments. Oh yeah. <laughs> the only the only reason why it's like I could I could phrase it like this: the Rangers are responsible for half of the Astros' wins this season, but. Yeah, but the way I'm just looking at it is I we saw vintage Andrew Heaney in that last start. And and he's not gonna pitch like that every start this season. I, I fully you know expect him to have decent outings, but it's just I just have a hard time packing him against the Astros. His last five starts against Houston, he's got a 4.63 ERA. Ronel Blanco, again, like you guys said, the, the, the 0. 0.00 ERA is not sustainable. You know, it's he's gonna get hit at some point. Wouldn't surprise me if he did today, but he's pitched well in two starts against the Rangers. His own start against him last year, he got the win, five innings, a three-run ball. Um, I think the Astros can do enough here. I said that this was their, probably going to be their best chance to get a win in this series. I, I haven't seen who's starting tomorrow, but I'm probably going to end up back on the Rangers. But today, I think I just got to roll with the uh, with the Astros. And yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, I'm going to go with the A's as well. I just I seeing Washington Ling Ling, you know, minus one thirty-five on the road. No thanks. I. I I bashed Joe Boyle too, but the A's have actually been pretty respectable against lefties and uh, been able to put up some home runs against lefties as well. And then, like Mitch said, that's been Gore's weakness. Um, so give me the Oakland A's in that one. Evo on the mound tomorrow against Christian Javier. 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 Yeah, could, yeah, okay. Or wait, are we getting plus odds with him tomorrow? Uh, I don't see the odds. Oh, yeah, we're, seeing, yeah, okay. we're getting plus odds. I'll be on the Rangers. On Evo for show tomorrow. I might go. I'm probably going tomorrow. We'll see. Never mind. I'm on the Astros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Javon>. <laughs> <laughs> whiplash for how quick I just turned on that one. <laughs> Javon, what you like in these three, my man? <laughs> You're muted. Yeah, the Pirates song... Uh, was the last game that didn't make my um premium list, you know. But you know, I like them. I like them a lot. Um, you know, the Phillies. One of the things about the Phillies is they're all or nothing team. You know, they swing either swinging for the fences or they're just <laughs> missing. You know what I mean? So, you know, they're not. What I'm saying is they're not one of those teams that you know like to um, you know, keep the keep the line going. You know, get a hit. Get a single here, single there, or double. You know, they're one of those swing for the fences teams. And um, Marco Gonzalez, you know, call it what you want, but he's not going to give up the deep ball like that. You know, um, he's just one of those guys that you know he's he's a he's a steady hand. He, you know, he has had his struggles throughout his career, but he's also had some you know some some good times in his career, and I think he's. Just a veteran presence on for this on um, Pirates team, and the Pirates bats, you know, they are a team that you know could spray could spray the field with hits, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So I like what they're doing, and um, I'm a I'm a back them in this one. There you go, there you go, Hot Rod Zawacki. Yeah, I have to agree with uh, with Javon. There, got to go with the Pirates. All the values there. Marcos Gonzalez, uh, definitely, uh, he's serviceable. He's, he's got. No decisions in both starts, um, but the Pirates have got the win. So we'll go with that again. The Pirates get the win. Spencer Turnbull's awful. Yuck. <laughs> it's just one of those things that you look at the two pitchers that you think in this game should fly over. I'm going to take the under uh, in this one. I think both uh, pitchers have a half decent. And as Joe Vaughn says, the Phillies are uh, knock string hits together. They're a bloop and a blast team. Someone gets a walk, someone hits a home run. Next thing you know, they're up 2 nothing. And uh, Marcus Gonzalez just isn't going to give up that be blast so i like the under there as well and then uh take the under washington oakland we seen one nothing yesterday what's going to change there first of three wins this one uh like a hockey game i don't see a whole lot of runs between washington and oakland i like the under there and then uh texas and houston how long can ronald blanco keep up uh pitching the way he's been pitching it's like you look texas uh he got texas last time um held them down but what is this uh fifth time through the order I think they get him. Got to go with Texas here in this one. I think Heaney does have a half decent start. I think uh, we get good Heaney today, not bad Heaney. But does he have a happy ending? <laughs> Maybe. He might get one later. <laughs> we are not talking about Tommy Henry here, okay? 
<laughs> we love you long time. <laughs> Sean, what you liking these three, my man? Uh, yeah, these are three kind of tougher games. I think the Pittsburgh Philly game, I think everyone's going to be chasing with the over. The first two games in the series went under. Uh, it's set at nine. Phillies have seen nine straight games go under the total. Uh, I'm not in the habit of going against streaks when it comes to baseball. Um, if you can get past that pitching, that starting pitching matchup, which isn't great, I think I, I'd look to the under in that one. I'm um, with everyone on that A's game. I just We talked similarly last weekend about uh, Kyle Gibson being one of those pitchers you look to fade off a good outing. I think Mackenzie Gore is the same situation. He's coming off a pretty good start against the Phillies last weekend. Um, early in the season like this, you get a guy like that coming off a good start. You can almost bank on him struggling here today. Uh, so I'll give a shot with the uh, with the A's in that one. <clears throat> and the third game, yeah, Ronel Blanco. Can't get behind him off those two two outings. The book on him was that he's more of a – better suited to being a reliever. Uh, we haven't seen that so far in these two starts because he's been good. But, um, you know, hard to see him doing it again a third time. Uh, always tough for a pitcher facing the same team twice in a week, like the like the situation is here. Uh, flip side, Andrew Heaney, that's not a pitcher that I'm looking to get behind too often. But uh, I was on the over last night. I don't mind the I don't mind the over in that one again today. Take another shot with that one. So we'll see. <sighs> for shouty, Sean. For shouty. For shouty. For shout, David. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm on Oakland as well. I mean, getting them at plus money here in the spot. I know Boyle <coughs> had that really bad first outing of the season. I think it was, but he bounced back in his last one. And Oakland's hot. I mean, when's the last time we've been able to say that they won five? Yeah. Of, they won five of six. They're not dead last in the AL West. Uh, they're probably throwing a parade with all you know five or six fans that are going to show up today. But um, so I like I like the A's there, and then uh, Phillies Pirates. You know. Turnbull, yeah, I've, I saw plenty of him in Detroit. Not good. Marco Gonzalez has had two solid starts this season. Um, but, I mean, when you actually look at his last two full seasons um, pitching, which was 2021 and 2022, gave up 59 home runs. So, I mean, he, he is uh, susceptible to the long ball. Uh, I think we see plenty of runs in that game. I know it's uh, it's something that, I think a lot of people are looking at, but I like the over there. And then uh, Rangers, Astros. Yeah, Blanco, you know, I didn't think he could do it a second time. I thought the no-hitter was just a one-off, and I figured Texas would uh, would get to him last time out, and they didn't. I know. I was there. It was crazy. <laughs> I, I was like, this guy's going to get eaten alive, and, and he didn't. He looked great again, and I just, I just don't think he can keep it up, but I also don't think Heaney. Um, no. I, I can't trust him. You know, three – these teams have played, what, five games already, and three of them have been high scoring. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll go with the over there as well. But I'd be shocked if Blanco comes out with a uh, with a third strong outing. But if he does, I mean, good for him, I guess. But I would lean over in that one as well. There you go. Last three, fellas. We got the Cubbies and the Manners. We got the Cardinals and Los Serpientes. The Diamondbacks, and we got the Padres and Los Dodgers. Can Mitch, we skip a? Do we skip an afternoon session? Yeah, we skipped them. Did I skip? Did I skip a slot? Yeah, the Red Sox, uh, Red Sox, Angels, Braves, Marlins, Giants, Rays, and uh, the second game. Yeah, of that there's, two, there's, two, yeah there's two game twos. You know, two double headers. So I'm looking at it. Okay, I did skip a slot. That was something. That was something. I, right. I started looking at Sunday, yes, and then um, I stayed on Sunday. So, yes, you are right. We got Angels, Red Sox, Braves, Marlins, and Rays, Giants is the next three. I messed that up. All right. Braves, Giants, Braves, Giants, Marlins, Giants, Red Sox. Giants, Rays. All right. First things first. I like the. Marlins against the Braves. Just going to continue to take them. I just need one win this series. Been good. Play with house money. So I don't know. It's the squarest thing you could possibly say. But generally, when Chris, you know, I was, I'm a White Sox fan. So I've seen plenty of Chris Sale. And generally, what happens is once he comes out, whoever comes in is like facing batting practice compared to facing this guy. 
So generally they get roughed up pretty good. I'm going to go with the Marlins to uh, beat on the Braves bullpen, which has been pretty bad in its own right this year. Um, I like uh, Logan Webb and the Giants to beat uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. I think Pepe has got a uh, good upside, but not today. And, you know, I don't take the Red Sox much, um, but I'm going to take him today. I know Rod's guy is on the mound, but for the Angels, I'm going to have to fade him. You know, I know Rod, we'll get to him in a minute. He's going to be canning, 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 but I, I certainly can't get there. So I'm going to have to go Red Sox as mu- as bad as this team is, man. This team sucks. They, they suck. They could be. The Red Sox could be the in the bottom five of all teams in all of Candy, candy, candy. Candy, candy, candy. Yeah, Riffinator here today. Riffalo. Yeah, and this uh, this time, so I'm going to go with, with the Braves on the run line. I like Max Meyer, but this is just a bad matchup for him. Um, got a Braves lineup that's the best in baseball against hitting right-handed pitching. And the Miami Marlins, you know, while we may only see Chris Sale for five, five or so innings, you know, the Marlins have, uh, have really struggled. They're dead last in isolated power and team OPS against lefties. They just have a really hard time hitting left-handed pitching. And uh, it's just, it, it's it's odd for me to see how how bad of a start the Marlins have gotten off to. And I'm sure they'll, they'll right the ship. And this could be a 500 team by the All-Star break. But right now, I just feel that the Braves are just heads and shoulders a better team. Yeah, I'm going to roll with them on the run line there. Maybe late minus two and a half as well. Um. I'm gonna take the uh, the Giants there with Logan Webb. Webb's a better starter at home, but what's the run line on the Braves? Uh, minus one twenty. <laughs> well, yeah. one fifteen. That's a typical Ruffalo play. I'm taking the other side. That's that's fine. Cool. Um, they give me the Giants. Logan Webb, I, like I said, he's a better pitcher at home, but you know, I just I'm not getting behind Ryan Pepio. Didn't couldn't cut it with the Dodgers. I don't see him cutting it with the Rays. So give me the Giants in that one. Jovan. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I want to find a way to. I want to find a way to rock with the Marlins. You know, I've seen this Chris Sale show before. He's due for us. He's due for a clunker. You know. Um. Marlins have haven't won at home yet. Just want to show for value. I'm gonna roll with the Marlins. You know, it's, it's really as simple as that. Um, you know, it is what it is. The the, the Atlanta Braves, they're bad in order, they're deadly. You know, they can get pounded, but just you know, based on value, I'll, I'll roll with the um with the Marlins. Not laying the run and a half. Um with all uh, Chris Hill on the mound. You know, they you know, it's probably likely to happen that they win by multiple runs, but if they don't, I'm cashing. Uh, and, you know, it's the sad state of affairs in Boston. You know, they're that bad. Um, the way they constructed this team is god-awful, you know, just coming from a Red Sox fan. So, you know, I don't have an opinion on the game. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's going to be a long season up here. 7-7, seven and seven, y'all throwing in the towel? Throwing, throwing it in? No, a bad defensive team. They they have less ways to win than um a lot of teams out there. They have to basically be perfect in order to win these games. The bullpens, you know, if if they're starting lineups, if they're starting on rotation, you no, know, aren't aren't um you know going into the into the sixth inning, their bullpen's not going to hold up throughout the season as the season goes on. So. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get ugly. They, they got expo- they got exposed on this home in, during this homestand. Last in division, ugly. Oh no, they did. Of course, they're gonna be last. I mean, that's that's a that's a given. But at least you know, last year they what hit eighty games. They won eighty games. Maybe I don't know what they won, 78, 80 games, something like that. You know, they might not crack seventy this game all this year if things keep on going like this. You know they beat up on bad teams um during their road during their road stand. You know they played the A's and you know the slumping um slow starting Mariners and you know the Angels. You know they're playing the Angels. They played the Angels last night. 
got rocked seven to nothing. You know, it's a it's a it's a blooper reel out there. You know, they got crushed. They got yeah. crushed, man. You watch you watch these games. You'll know who's who. The Red Sox. The Red Sox. They came, came home with that Atlanta. one point below two ERA starting and in, in bullpen. It was like. That's not a 1.89 ERA rotation. No, the the pro the problem with the Red Sox is that you know they didn't spend any money. You know they wanna they wanna um act like they they have the um Tampa Bay Rays uh, budget and they don't. They're they're a major league. They're the one of the major market teams in 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 baseball, and they're not they're not acting like it. They're penny pinching. You know when you get rid of Mookie Betts in his yeah. prime. You know, with when he still got you know six, seven good years in him at worst, you pretty much have said we're gonna we're we don't want to win. You know, yeah, like yeah, you, you get guys what, like you get guys like Trevor Story, while you already have a guy is in the Bogarts. You basically you know you you um you get your replacement, and said replacement is always injured, and he you no know, he's he, he wasn't a good player from you know from from the beginning. He was just a, you know, had inflated numbers being being out of Colorado. You get guys like that, and this is the problem with baseball. You have um these um analytics guys, yeah, you know, and they look I, at the problem. They think they think that you could just plug and play different, you know, different players. The talent wins out in any league, in any sport. You know what I mean? So I agree. You know, you know, you, you try, try to try to have these guys. Starters. You try to have these guys do the same thing some of the stars are doing, it's not going to work. You know what I mean? It's it's not a one-size-fits-all type of thing. Guys have their talents. Other guys have their weaknesses. And, you know, you're, you're seeing it Well, with the Red Sox. You're going to see it all year long. These guys aren't going to – they're not going to do anything. You know, it's going to be a lot of – it's going to be a lot of bad baseball being played in, um, in Boston. Defense is god-awful. You know, and if you're not if you're not hitting and you can't hold down hold it down on the defensive end on the in, in fielding and and you know leaving your but why they get rid of Verdugo? Drive, why they get rid of Verdugo? I mean, Verdugo had his issues in Boston, you know, but I mean that's that's a whole separate issue. But they just don't have the they just don't have the talent, and they're trying to get these young guys a chance, I guess, you know. The ownership, they they're not in the spending money right now. They're not they're not they're not having they don't have um, t- um championship aspirations. They're just trying to make money. So as long as the um the stands are filled, which they will be, I mean not you know not maybe not to sell out you know levels, but you know they're coming up with all types of gimmicks to um get the get the um you no know, butts in the seats. You know they have so many um different nights like. They have a um, Bad Bunny night, uh, and they have a anime night, night, and they have a Star Wars night. So this, you know, they have you know um, discounts for college kids. You know, Boston's a big um, college town, so you know as long as they have that, they're gonna keep they're gonna keep breaking in the money. Well, also the stadium. You know, they have the stadium. People no, come right. just that's to see Fenway that's Park. Saying. So that you combination. Know? That's like see- Wrigley. It's like the Cubs. Same yeah. thing. You know, you're gonna see you're gonna see the visit the visiting fans coming in in droves. Drowning out Boston fans, like it's it's it's, it's a mess up here. So, you know, un- right. until they until they um you know get get back to their big spending winning ways, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be ugly. Fair enough. All right, what you liking these three, my man? And for me in this one, you know, I like uh I like Boston uh, first five in this spot. Uh, they've already they've already seen Canning once this year, and they ripped them up. Um, Got the win in that game, uh, did Boston uh, earlier this season in LA. But uh, hey, you look here at Boston. I think they uh, come out and they can get to Candy. Candy's not good. <laughs> He's been awful. So I like you Boston. Love Canning. You're always like and, you love Canning. You love Canning. Always no, I don't like Canning. Canning. <laughs> I never have liked Candy. Candy's not good. <laughs> He's a big Canning guy. Canning. He's always been so, a yeah. big Canning guy. Now, yeah. give about four home runs and two starts. How many more? Swear, man. You were like Canning, Canning, Canning. He's gonna make Boston look. My Boston's offense look like uh, prime A material here uh, is what Candy's gonna do in this one. So give me Boston first five because that bullpen after that, oof, can get really ugly as Johan said. So I like Boston first five here 
they can get to canning. And then the other one, I like the over uh, in the uh, Atlanta Marlins. Um, these two teams, when they get together, it's just, just like they don't play any defense whatsoever. They just – they runs come early and often. Uh, last – was it seven and one, the over in their last eight meetings? Give me the over again in that one. Sean. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I can't back the Red Sox again this season after that from Javon. I think he laid it out pretty well. Um, I had them on Thursday. I think it's the only time. I, I've had them twice this year. I had them uh, one game last week in Seattle and got a win, but I went back to the well one too many times there on Thursday against Baltimore and should have had that game, just couldn't couldn't wrap it up. Had the, had the lead late, blew it, and then an extra inning. I mean, that summed, that summed up the Red Sox perfectly, that 10th inning in that game. I uh, got Bayo on the mound. Bayo on the mound, I can rock with him. Other than that, it's not a tough. I mean, that went on Thursday. It went from being a two-one game, and then they lose nine-four. So it was uh, it was a mess. I can't back them there, but no real opinion in that game. Uh, the other two, I can make a case for the over in both of those games. Um, I think I think first first lean from most in that Rays Giants game will be to take the under after the low scoring game last night, but. Logan Webb hasn't really uh, hasn't really settled in here yet this year. He hasn't been great. Um, I think he gives up a few here. Uh, Giants. That Giants lineup is kind of strange. If you look up and down that lineup, it, it, it's not bad. Um, but you know, traditionally they just don't produce. Uh, so so we'll see on them here. But I think that line. I think we've seen that total drop down to seven and a half now. So I think I'd consider the uh, the over at seven and a half in that game. There you go, David. Yeah, I hate to do it after that uh, after that speech, but I'm going to go with the Red Sox. I know uh, defensively uh, they've had their issues. Um, pitching wise, they've been they've been okay. I mean, obviously not of late, but uh, Angels going with Caning, I I can't back them. I I think Boston's going with uh, ESPN still has it listed as undecided, but I think they're going with Criswell, um, who's been okay in the minors, but. I just I, I'm gonna fade Caning. I'll take the Red Sox. Did you say Caning? Uh, huh? Did you say Caning? Did you say Caning? Can not can a Caning Caning? I thought you said Caning. It was like he's gonna get a Caning Caning. I'm gonna. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the Red Sox there, and then uh, Braves Marlins. I'm um, I'm gonna take the Marlins just because there's really not a ton of value on the Braves, but I. Uh, I don't, I don't love it. Meyer has been, has been okay, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll ride with the Marlins there. There you go. All righty. Next slot, we got the, or did I talk about that slot? I don't think I did. Um, I don't really like the slot. You know what I will do? I'll fade the Rays. That's what I like doing. I think the Rays have a shot at finishing last in this division. I think this is one of the more overrated teams in baseball. They got a negative run differential right now, minus 10. They're ass. They're not good. I know they're back in the trap. They're looking like they're supposed to do some. San Francisco, they've started out kind of ass, too. They might be overrated, too. Tough game, but I'm going to lean San Fran with uh, Logan Webb. San Fran, I know Mitch loves San Fran. San Fran, I'm, I'm, I'm putting them in the box of – in the same box with the Mariners. They got all this potential. They're supposed to do all this, and they're just ass. They're just not doing nothing. They're just not doing nothing. I got the Mariners, the Giants over there. Who else in that box? That team is supposed to be good, but they just not. They over there in that box. And the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays low-key deserve to be in that box, too. Three teams that's supposed to be good, but they just not right now. All right, let's keep it rolling. We got um, – I'm on Saturday this time. I'll make sure I'm on Saturday. We got the Tigers-Twins game two. We got Yankees-Guardians game two. We got Cardinals-Diamondbacks. We might as well go all five. Um, Padres-Dodgers and cubs Mariners close it out two game twos cardinals diamondbacks padres dodgers cubs manners i'll lead off um i like tigers game two i didn't really like them game one today but i really like them game two with matt manning we are laying some odds here minus 135 on the money line but that will be fine 
The Twins might win the first one. And if the Twins win the first one, then I promise you I'm going to load up on the Tigers' money line um, in this one because they're the 50-50 Twins, okay? It's just part of the narrative. Just got to follow it, and you'll be just fine. 50-50 Twins. Um, but, now nah, the Tigers been playing really well. I like what I'm seeing from them. I trust Manning, who's been solid. Give me the Tigers in that one. And I'm going to take the Guardians game, too, with my guy McKenzie. Um I took Yankees game one, but I think game two, this is a Guardian style spot. Uh, Guardians been playing well to start the season. It's probably going to be a, I don't really know what I'm going to expect from Cody Poteet, but I think it's going to just be the typical Guardian style game, lower scoring, Guardians edge them out in the end. So I think both series probably split um, today. I like Tigers game two, Guardians game two. And give me Los Serpientes against the Cardinals. With Ryan Nelson on the mound. Uh, I think Sean was talking about Kyle Gibson earlier. Kyle Gibson's ass. Um, he looked all right against the Padres, you know, overrated Padres. But to get lit up by the Marlins, who were really struggling, you know, six innings, seven hits, seven earned, two bombs. Ew. Um, I think he's in some serious trouble today against the Diamondbacks. Ryan Nelson. His numbers are disgusting as well, but in hindsight, I mean, his first two starts were the Yankees and the Braves. You feel me? Like, I mean, show me somebody else who had it tougher to start the season. I think this is kind of a chill spot for him, and he actually looked decent in that last start on the road against the Braves. Five innings, three hits, three earned. He did give up two bombs against the, it's the Braves. You feel me? They did lose, but... I don't think the Cardinals pack that same punch is all I'm saying. I think I can trust them today at home. Solid bounce back spot for the Diamondbacks. Um, we're getting them at a nice price, too. Give me Los Serpientes at home at the crib. Mitch? Yeah, I like uh, Los Serpientes as well. Um, Kyle Gibson is a stiff, man. This guy just gets rocked. I would lay two and a half runs here. I think it's one of those games if the Diamondbacks win – they're going to win big, so you might as well just lay the bigger odds on it and uh, just go for it, man. You know, you got to pick your spots. Baseball is all about picking your spots and finding value and, um, you know, getting big money here at minus two and a half. Let's see what we're going to get. Can we cash our ticket? We will get, let's see. Minus two and a half. They even money right now. So, yeah, you're going to get a good return. Yep. So, I think that's where the money's at, though. So, let's see. So Serpientes under L B spread. So minus, minus two and a half on the Diamondbacks is plus two fifty. I might be there with you on that. So it's well worth taking a shot there. I'd go actually, I'd go the I'd go the I'd go the minus one and a half at plus one seventy five. I'd go the minus two and a half at plus two fifty. I go the minus three and a half at plus three fifty. I like the yes runs first inning. The team total over for the Diamondbacks and um, Diamondbacks money line. There you go. As well as the game, as well as the game over. Kyle Gibson's a sack of shit. If you think Gausman's bad, man, this guy's the worst. The only thing, the only problem that Kyle Gibson has is when he can't find the plate, he walks a ton of guys. When he does find the plate, they smack it all over the park. It's like it's one or the other. There's no in between. It's not like he just has a masterful outing. Or anything. He got crushed. Look at last time out. He went six innings, only one walk, seven runs, all earned, two bombs on 94 pitches. The game before that, four four hits, two walks, two runs, two bombs, 94 pitches. He's gonna get crushed. Move low. Yeah, I'm going to go with the over in that Cardinals game. Um, I'm going to see plenty of runs in that one off of Kyle Gibson. You know, I'm, I'm back to to jumping off of Gibson. I'm, I think I'm done with him. But I also think that, uh, yeah, I think Ryan Nelson gives up his fair share as well here. I'm also going to go with uh, the, the Guardians and Tristan McKenzie in game two there. Uh, I'm just not a Cody Poteet fan. Um yeah, I think Tristan McKenzie gets it done. And give me the over nine in that uh, Padres-Dodgers matchup. Gavin Stone stinks. And Matt Waldron still going up against the Dodgers lineup here. I'm going to take the over nine in that one. Yeah, I'm on Detroit in game two. You know, 
until the twins can show that they can hit and put in driving runs. You know, I'll be on the other side of them. So that would favorable pitching matchup in this one. Um, you know, both both bullpens are, you know, a top rate right now. But I just trust the um, Detroit Tigers more this year. So a lot more. Um, so I'll roll with Detroit, roll with Arizona. Um, you know, Kyle Gibson, um, you know, Mitch has already said it. You know, he's just one of those guys I personally like to fade and have faded, you know, throughout his career in certain, um, certain spots. And, you know, you can't go wrong with it most times, you know. So that's really the um, the long and the short of it there. And I'm on Seattle. Um, I don't think Emerson Hancock's as bad as his pitching performance indicated. Um, last start, did have a bad start. Um, but I think, you know, he's, he'll be steady enough to um, get the job done in this one. And, you know, really, I'm just – trying to get some buyback back on the Mariners team who they're talented. I think they'll, you know, at some point come out of their, come out of their slump. Um, and I think that, um, oh, oh. Monaga is not as, you know, he's, he's come out the gates, what come out the gate well, but, um, you know, he hasn't gone long enough in his uh, couple starts to really get a, a read on him because once you go into like the, seeing the same batting order, you know, two times or three times, you know, then you get an idea of who a pitcher really is. And until I see that from him, then the jury's still out as far as I'm concerned. So, um, you know, I'm on the, I'm on the Mariners. I think, the, I think they could um, also uh, touch up the Cubs on Bolton. So. Hot rod. In this high spot, we got to go with the uh, Padres to beat the Dodgers again. Uh, too much plus price there uh, to pass up. Dodgers with Gavin Stone going, and uh, we've seen the Dodgers bullpen give it up late again. So give me the Padres uh, in that one. And then I'm going to go St. Louis. Kyle Gibson, uh, you know, look, his, his start that he had a good start was in a night game, and uh, he only gave up four hits in that one. So we've got another late night game here in this one. And uh, after what I've seen from that Arizona bullpen late, uh, they could definitely give it up at the best of them. So uh, I'm going to take St. Louis here uh, to win it again. I'm not a Ryan Nielsen fan either. I think he can give it up as well. So. Give me the Cardinals in that one. And uh, I like uh, the Guardians uh, and the Yankees under both games, first one and the second one. And then both these teams aren't hitting a whole lot of offense, and I think we got a lower scoring one, even in game two, take the under. Sean Murphy. Yeah, I think it would be easy to jump off the D-backs here after that game last night, but what I didn't mention earlier is that the Cardinals uh, pitching staff is awful as well. So yeah, I'll fade Cal Gibson here. I think the D backs offense uh, offense explodes here in this one. I think uh, Arizona wins that game. Uh, I like the under in the early game between the Yankees and guardians, but in the second game, I like the over uh, Cody Poteet uh, hasn't pitched in the, in the major since 2022. Uh, the Marlins gave up on him. So, I mean, I don't think I can't see this guy uh, doing much. And he's got a career, Career ERA approaching five, fifth over five. I just think uh, bad spot for uh, for the uh, for uh, Poteet here against the Guardians, but I think the Yankees will put up some numbers as well against Tristan McKenzie. So I'll go over in that one. Uh, no real opinion on the other games. David, close this out. Yeah, I'm with the uh, with the crew here on the fade Kyle Gibson train. He was in Minnesota for uh, the first you know good portion of his career, and so I saw him a lot. And he's just not good. Um, I do expect plenty of runs to be scored. So, I mean, I think uh, Diamondbacks and the overs to play there. Um, I'm with you, Jay. The Tigers in game two. Matt Manning uh, made one start for the Tigers um, in their first doubleheader against the Mets uh, last week. He's uh, he's a pretty good young starting pitcher. Just missed out on making the rotation. I think he'll be in the rotation um, sooner rather than later, probably taking over for Maeda or Flaherty. Um, but I like the Tigers there at home. I do like the Guardians as well. Tristan McKenzie kind of makes me nervous. I like him, um, but just as I dive deeper into his numbers here, really, I know he's dealt with some injuries, but he's he has had some struggles. But um, but I do think the Guardians are the play there at uh, at home. And then uh, the other late ones, I, I do think the Padres have some value with the number just going fading Stone, but uh, I don't love Waldron 
um, by any means. Seem like you kind of love Waldron. <laughs> the impression you give off, at least. Do my am I try to give off a a, a Waldron? Kind of read kind of you can read it all over your face. Kind of. Could, I got to work. Could be the jersey you're wearing. I got to work on that. Could be the Waldron jersey you're wearing. <laughs> It's like yeah. and, and doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch. What you selling today, my man? I got a Major League Baseball pick. I have two other Major League Baseball picks that I have in there. I don't have them in any package yet. I might have. I guess I'll put them in a package. Um, they'll be singles, but I'm only going to have the three plays today. I don't. I don't, it's, it's a fun card and there's a, just a lot of games out there, but it's not like one of these ones where like you just see something like, you know, like that Brewers game yesterday against the Orioles where it was just like, oh my God. <laughs> or, uh, you know, I don't see any JP France out there pitching either or Hunter Brown. Oh man. <laughs> Those Astros <laughs> and the starting pitchers over the last two days. <sighs> what that'll do to a team ERA. <laughs> Ruffalo, selling today, my man. Yeah, I got my uh, uh, Saturday MLB triple play on the board. Also got a pickoff play for the baseball today. Um, but if you want uh, bonus NHL plays as well, got that as part for uh, people with on my long term passes as well. So definitely check that out and uh, use that promo code pick at checkout for fifteen percent off your purchase. There you go, Javon. You selling today? Yeah, I got an MLB five pack. Actually, I have um, two of them. Um, one of them's gonna, you know, come off the board uh, due to being, you know, or some early action. So I got a later one. And all I got seven plays. You know, so jump on something long term. You know, I've been um been hard last you know month or whatever. Um, you know, uh, NBA. You know, in full board last game of the season. I think I got some pretty good spots in there. So jump on some long-term Major League Baseball, come out the gate hot. Um, I think I'm top three in, in MLB on the leaderboards right now. So, you know, just looking to um, put it together day by day. There you go. Put it together day by day with Jovan over at Pig Dogs Premium. Hot Rod Zawacki. What you selling, my man? And over at uh, Pig Dogs Premium, I got a Saturday night three-pack, which includes uh, two plays on the ice. Plus my uh, solo MLB selection, and then uh, my ten star play of the day sold separately by itself. What's uh, that? What is it? What's your ten star play? Ten star play of the day. Yes, it is uh, on the ice. Big game in the ice. Uh, lots of games in the ice. I've got six games uh, in hockey. Uh, we're seventeen to five the last twenty two days on my uh, ten star play of the day. So scoop it up. It's been fire. We dropped it yesterday. Time to bounce back on it. As you see, we drop them when we bounce back. So it's been hot. Tried. I tried. I know you tried. <laughs> Sam Murphy, still in the day, my man. Uh, today we got three MLB plays in the go, a 10 star total in the afternoon. Uh, try and repeat last night's 10 star total with that Astros Rangers over. So we'll have another 10 star this afternoon. And I've got a hockey play going in late afternoon as well. So four plays on the go. Go. I bought my Sean Murphy. David, what you still in the day, my man? Yeah, I got a handful of games uh, in the NHL and the MLB. Uh, been a rough couple of days in the NHL for me, so looking to bounce back. But uh, I have a couple of different packages. Uh, first NHL game goes off early, 1230 Eastern time. Last one at 10 Eastern. So full day of hockey action and a uh, couple of plays in baseball as well. David, me today, man, I got – Three baseball plays. You can scoop them up. Pick Dogs Premium. I got them in a three pack, or you can get them individually. I was three and zero yesterday in Major League Baseball. Good day. Let's do it again today. You can scoop them up. Pick Dogs Premium. Something I saw this morning. They're giving me plus one twenty five on the Clippers Mavs series. They're giving me plus one twenty five with the Mavs, bro. If you want to tie your money up for two weeks on a something that I believe is a lock. Go place that shit. We're not losing to the Clippers. We're not doing it. It's not happening. It's not happening. Ha, huh, fellas. I know everybody don't want to talk NHL, but there is a nice little NHL card today. Mitch. 
before we talk NHL, is there anything else you want to talk about? I'll give out my parlay before I leave. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the Rockies. I'm gonna parlay it up with the Marlins and um, the Diamondbacks. There you go. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow for that 30 game card, man. I'll be here. It's gonna be uh, pull up a chair. Gonna be here a while. I want to uh, call Uber Eats. Gonna have, have it locked and loaded. Yeah. Thanks everyone for joining us, man. Thanks all our cappers as always for joining the show. Yeah. Anybody else not want to talk hockey? Devon? Is that hockey? Yeah, we're gonna talk hockey. <laughs> <laughs> other than no. that, other than that's the end of the show. So Yeah, I mean when you get out right now. Yeah, I'll give out the parlay. Uh, let's see what I can cook up real quick. All right, I'm on the Pirates. Um, Brewers. And uh, Cleveland, game one. There you go. Three teamer from Devon. Appreciate you joining me today, my man. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. I got to pop off two boys, but uh, I'd love to talk hockey, but uh, I'll throw out my parlay as well. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go D backs, A's, and we'll keep it out west. We'll throw, we'll throw the Dodgers in there. Three team parlay tonight. There you go. Appreciate you, Sean. We'll catch you tomorrow, guys. See you soon. Guess what else we're going to do? Watch this. It's a magic trick already. <laughs> this is muted. No, no, Jay, Jay, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to, to take headman on this one today. I'm, I'm trying to finish up everything for the wrap round because I'm gonna have to film it as soon as I get off of here. All right, let's do it. In and out of here. Let's, how many games is there? One, two, three, fourteen. Fourteen. Oh my god. <laughs> let's go. Jay, Jay thought he was getting off scot free, and he's like, oh crap. All right. he's, like, he's like, what have I done? All right, let's do first five. Island, Islanders, Rangers, Kraken, Stars, Jets, Avs, Sabres, Panthers, Devils, Flyers. That's the first five for me. Um, Rufalo, talk to me. All right, short and sweet. If you're looking for a parlay piece, I would go with the Jets plus the one and a half today. It's going to be juicy, but I think that's a one goal game. Both teams trying to play for home ice in that division. Um, the Avalanche are really good at home, but the, the Jets are the hotter team right now. So, you know, I would take the plus one half as he being a one goal game either way. And I could honestly see this game potentially going to overtime as well. So, give me the, the Jets plus the one and a half. Um, for the early game, I'm going to take the Islanders at plus money. I know the Rangers are solid and they're still fighting for that, uh, that President's Trophy, even though I don't know if they actually want it given the history of the President's Trophy, but still fighting for that division too. Um, but the Islanders are hot. They're playing for a playoff spot right now, and you're getting plus 146 with them. If you were giving me, you know, minus 135 with the Rangers, maybe a little bit easier to talk me onto it. But at this kind of plus odds, I got to go with the Islanders. There you go, David. Yeah, I'm going to be on the other side of that. I think the Rangers uh, minus the one and a half is where where I'm going to be at. The uh, like you said, the Rangers are still battling Carolina for first in the Metro. I know the Islanders are um, also fighting for a playoff spot, but they are pretty, in my opinion, securely into the postseason. Um, they've separated themselves from the other, what, four teams there. Um, and then looking at the Devils Flyers, I'm going to take the Devils, um, but the plus money on the road. The Flyers, I know they won. Uh, their last game with the Flyers have been awful over the last two weeks. So I think Devils plus money uh, is the spot to be. Hot rod. Swaggy. In, 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 that, in that New York, New York one, I think that one hits overtime. There's your overtime game. I think that uh, needs more than 60 minutes. Both these teams are uh, are hungry and battling. And uh, I've seen many a, a New York, New York battle go to overtime. Um, I like the Stars today uh, after their uh, – 
they got goalied, I'd say, in that one, uh, their last game out uh, against Winnipeg. Brousseau was in that, and uh, man, did he stand on his head. Hellebuck hasn't looked good for the Jets, and I think he gets to start here. I like the abs on the puck line. I think they beat up on the Jets. This is a battle for uh, home ice advantage. These two teams are going to play in the playoffs, so this is your definite preview of uh, these two teams are going <laughs> to be a long, drawn-out series, and I think the abs are the one that's going to strike first here in this one. This is the fourth game on the road for the Jets as well. And uh, a Jets fan, um, abs at home, it's just, I can't go against them there. And then uh, the Flyers, keep their hopes alive, slim, but it is. But uh, the Devils are, uh, they packed her in. I know they're going to battle, but uh, I like the Flyers to uh, get the win in that one. Stars money line is going in a parlay for me. We're the best team in hockey. We're going to win the cup. Um, man. Oh, uh, take the puck line. Seattle looks like awful. Seattle got beat by the, uh, but the sharks. Jay, <laughs> won't, Jay, what was in that cup? What we not? You don't think we're gonna win the cup? You don't think we can win the cup? Uh, no, I'm just saying. I heard. Be- I heard the words "best team in hockey." I think we are. You're one of. I think I'm we like, are the best. I can't see. I'm home. Say, of course, I, can I can't. Say. I can't say the. I'm saying one of. I will give you that. I just. I can't say the just yet. Fair. The but best. I will definitely give you one of because they're they're pretty good. <laughs> and if Ottinger stayed healthy, I'm, I'm my, sure I, the and I've made a bet on the uh, Dallas Stars come out of the West. So if if I if, if Jake Ottinger stays healthy, my 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 Ottinger for Vesna ticket would have still cashed if he yeah, stayed healthy. If he didn't get hurt if he would have been healthy. Yeah. Shoddy, let's go next five. We got Lightning Capitals, Red Wings, Maple Leafs, Canadian Senators, Bruins Penguins. Blue Jackets, Predators. Roof up. <sighs> Give me the worst name in sports Predators. over the Blue Jackets on the puck line. Um, yeah, it's it's just a lot versus a little there. I know the Preds have very little to play for here, but the Blue Jackets have been one of the worst teams in the uh, in the NHL on the road this season. The other like 10, 27, and 1 or something like that, so... The Predators, you know, they've been playing solid defensive hockey for the better part of the last couple months. Uh, Columbus, in the course of this three-game road trip they're on, have been outscored 12-2 to and losing all three games. So, give me the uh, the Preds there. And uh, give me Montreal at plus 130 um, against Ottawa. I know Ottawa plays their best hockey at home as well, but these two teams hate each other. And whenever I see an underdog in a rivalry matchup like that, I, I'm going to take a shot here with, with the dog because... Montreal's played their best hockey on the road um, for in terms of covering that puck line. So I think they can be competitive on the puck line here. I think they have a good shot at winning the game outright. So give me the uh, the Canadians plus 130. There you go. David. Yeah, that Blue Jackets Predators game. I like the under there. Uh, Nashville coming off of a back to back last night. Columbus, um, really bad offensively. So I think we see Nashville jump on them, but, uh, but still a pretty low scoring game. So I like the under there. And then. Red Wings, Maple Leafs, I think the Leafs uh, minus the one and a half is the play. The Wings trying to stay in the uh, in the postseason race, but they've just they've been really bad over the last 20 games or so. I also think Austin Matthews gets uh, gets a couple here. The Red Wings have a really hard time stopping uh, superstars. And uh, I know Matthews is chasing his 70th goal. So I like uh, Maple Leafs minus one and a half and Matthews uh, two plus goals. Not take his so what, that would put him on 70, wouldn't it? That would put him on 70. Yeah. The wings just they really struggle against superstars. And yeah, my wings, I'd love to see him win. I won't be playing the Maple Leafs just because I'll be rooting for the wings, but they've been bad uh over the last like month and a half. Hello. For me, for me in these I'm ones, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> for, me, for me in these ones, I like uh, I like Washington to try to keep their slim, slim, slim playoff hopes alive. Uh, over Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay looks like they've packed it in, um, ready to go uh, for their big playoff run. And um, Montreal over Ottawa, I'll take Ottawa. Um, they've been playing the better hockey, 6-4, and four, and they've uh, beat Montreal in eight straight hockey games. Uh, hasn't even been close. I'm just, And I'm not a Caden Primo fan. He's getting a start for Montreal. Um, he's going to get peppered. They just, I don't know. They When he gets in there, it doesn't look like they play a whole lot of defense. Um, you're going to end up having to try to save uh, 40-something shots. You know, it just doesn't fare so well there. And how hard we go? Uh, Nashville, uh, Columbus. Ugh. Take the over in that one, six and a half. I don't see an under. 
Uh, I think Nashville could get there on their own. Jet Greaves. We, they haven't even made this announcement who's going to start that one. Or either Jet Greaves or we're going to go to uh, Malcolm Subban again. So either way, I like the over in that one. <laughs> Suban would change my mind for sure. That would change your mind. Well, so far it's either Jack Greaves or Suban. That's Greaves, the options. Greaves has actually hasn't Not been bad. horrible. I mean, he's save percentage wise, he's saving a lot of pucks. I'm gonna lean towards the Maple Leafs, the hype train. Rod, Chris, is this a year they're gonna do something, or is it the same old Maple Leafs? They got to play the Panthers in the first round. Is the way it's looking. Yikes. Until I see them do something, I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna set any expectations. So I'll be pleasantly surprised if they do. I think we see a Canadian team win the cup. One of them is gonna win it. I think this is the year. Stars are not in Canada. No, no. It turns out they're not. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's exactly. I think that's exactly why he's saying it. <laughs> Last three, man. We got the Canucks. Canuck bent versus the Oilers. <laughs> we got the Ducks versus the Kings. And we got the Wild versus the Sharks. Ruflo. Yeah, the only thing I feel like doing in these last three is uh taking a shot on the uh, on the Sharks here. Um it is their final home game of the season, I believe. Um, or maybe there is one more. I, I think this is the final home game. Uh, but the Wild, you know, I'm not laying minus 235 with a team with nothing to play for and a team that's played their less effective hockey on the road. All of a sudden, the Sharks, you know, they think they might have found something here with, uh, with, with, you know, Cooley and Net. And, uh, yeah, I think the Sharks, they just want to win a game to, to apologize to the fans for this debacle that they've done this season. So, um, yeah, give me the Sharks here. Two to one on the money. Yeah, why not? David. I'm also on the Sharks. Uh, Minnesota played last night, got the doors blown off in, in Vegas. They lost 5 2 against Colorado in the game before that. And yeah, San Jose's 2 1 and 1 in their last four. Are they terrible? Yes. But uh, I think they're playing okay right now. I mean, even in their last win against Seattle, they got outshot badly. Uh, they But they had a good goaltending effort. But I just think, like Chris said, Minnesota has nothing to play for. San Jose kind of is trying to play for a little bit of pride. So I'll take the Sharks there. And then Ducks, Kings. I was on the Kings the other night when these two teams played back on uh, April 9th. And uh, Ducks won 3-1. But Anaheim played last night against uh, the Flames. Struggled there. Lost 6-2. They were down 4 nothing, Almost came back to tie it, actually. But uh, ended up losing 6-2. I think the Kings do get it done today. And I'll take them on the puck line. How rise the wacky. And for me, in this high slot, I agree. We got to take the Sharks here. Um, you look at the Wild after playing Vegas uh, on Friday night, and they, ooh, they got whooped in that one. They give up. They don't care. <laughs> They're not going to make the playoffs. They're just waiting for tea times to start. So what do they do in Vegas on a Friday night? <laughs> you, you're not going to make the playoffs. You have no motivation. And, and this flight didn't leave until this morning. <laughs> With a little bus trip over to uh, San Jose. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to go with the Sharks in that one. Jesper Wallstad is going to get the start for uh, the Wild in that one. He did make a start his last time out. He shut out the uh, the Blackhawks in his lone start, but he, he's not a good goalie. Uh, San Jose could get to him. And uh, as David said, the Ducks just beat the Kings. A little bit of revenge. Kings get the win over the Ducks in that one. And then the big battle. This battle's for the Pacific, basically. Whoever's going to win this one uh, will basically cruise to the Pacific between the Canucks and the Oilers, and uh, I'm going to say I'm going to live. We haven't heard any news who someone's going to be back, but I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say McDavid's back for this one, the Oilers get the win. You know, he's been resting the last couple of games. I don't think they sit him here for this one. This is a big circle spot. The Oilers play their best hockey at home, and they've done it all season. You don't go out and try uh, to uh, win the Pacific and win this home ice advantage, then I'm going to say you're out, and I'm going to cheer for Dallas to win the Stanley Cup. How's that? There you go. There you go. I'm upset with the NHL, man. My Coyotes are leaving Arizona. Uh, that's so sad. Do they have a home game left? Animal Control came and picked him up off the side of the road and took him to Utah. 
I'm trying to see. Do they have a home game left? I might, I might want to go or something. Um, they do. They last game of the season is against the Oilers on Wednesday. Well, how quick is the jersey this? if you want one? Because you won't see him. Oh yeah, but when is the lo- when, when is the relocation? I mean, it's happen? not next year, is it? There's oh, no yeah. way. I'm pretty sure it is. Is it really next year? Next year, yeah. Yeah, they want him out of Arizona. They want him out. Get out. That's quick. <laughs> Hopefully they keep coyotes. Yeah. I look, there are coyotes. The, the mayor of Arizona is like, yeah, mayor, the mayor of Arizona is like, you guys don't have to leave, but you got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. There are coyotes in Utah, so they could keep coyotes. Yeah, I saw some of the names that they were suggesting, and some of those are really bad. Oh, it's a lot more sense bad. than the Jazz. Yeah, I saw Yetis. I saw Monuments. No. The Utah oh Yetis? No, no, no Yetis. There's no Yetis in Utah. Uh... <laughs> Utah I, mean... I just say if they're gonna do it, just go Utah Coyotes, man. Just stay the Coyotes. Dude, does the Jazz uh, Stadium can that have hockey or no? I think they. I don't know. I mean, some. I mean, they can obviously put it in, but you know how some stadiums just like don't look good with hockey in it. I didn't know if. If that's where they would play or not. Hmm. Sure. Well, that brings us to the end of the show, fellas. You got a parlay for me, Rufalo? Yeah, everybody's been clamoring for it in the uh, in the comments. So I'll go with a UFC parlay tonight. I'm gonna go with uh, Alex Pereira, Yuri Prohaska, Kayla Harrison, and Justin Gaethy. Four leg parlay plus five eighty two. Go, David. I'm gonna take the Maple Leafs on the money line, uh, Rangers on the money line, Tigers game two money line, and the uh, Red Sox money line. This is wacky. Take the Royals, take the Pirates, take the Oilers, parlay it up, take Holly home to win by KO. She knocks out somebody today. Give me the Blue Jays run line. Give me the Toronto Maple Leafs puck line. Give me the Dallas Stars puck line. And yeah, that's what I like. Three teamer. Money making Saturday. Appreciate each and every one of y'all for joining us today. Be back tomorrow. Same time, same program. Ton of games tomorrow. So make sure y'all tune in. See y'all later. We're out of here. Peace.